So here we are, we're back at it again with the second half of this Build Your Own Fighters Pass prediction list. Make sure to check out part one in the icon above if you happen to miss it, and let me know in the comments below who I should talk about in part three. And without further ado, let's jump right into the action. Shantae, indie character that originated on Nintendo hardware, strong female lead, new game on the horizon, Things are looking pretty good for Shantae. Shantae has a lot more fans than I would have initially pegged her for, but I'll just boil that down to what I like to call the waifu effect. Some good 2D platformers under her belt and a really unique design give her a fighting chance, in my mind. Hair attacks and transformations to keep things fresh go a long way, and I'm sure Sakurai would have a field day with a moveset for her. The only thing holding her back may be her status as an indie character. It seems that if any indie had a chance of being a playable fighter, it was going to be Shovel Knight, and we all know how that turned out. Maybe this is a barrier, or maybe it doesn't mean anything at all. Either way, I don't have much personal attachment to this character, but I know there's a large group of people who would be over the moon to see her inclusion. If Shantae manages to get in, it will really feel like nothing is off the table. Hype level 7! Likelihood 6. Gino. Yes, I was wrong. I know I was wrong. I'm sorry. I'm allowed to be wrong. For those of you who don't know, this was my top pick for ending the first Fighter's Pass. Gino was practically the poster boy for Smash DLC without even being in the game, and it seemed to me that it was bound to happen eventually. Ultimate truly seems to be giving us everything the fans have ever wanted, and yet Gino remains unsecured. Now people may disagree with me on this, but I feel like if it was going to happen, it would have happened in the first Fighter's Pass. Because he hasn't already been added, it seems to me he may have already been looked at and dismissed. which would be a shame. He's still quite a bit more likely than some of these other picks, and there's no doubt in my mind Sakurai would have a lot of fun using his specials from the game to make an iconic moveset. He's a cool character that's representative of Mario's first foray into RPGs. And what's not to love about that? Like I said, I think he's kind of more unlikely now than he was in the first Fighter's Pass, but I'm still holding out hope for Geno. Hype level 9! Likelihood? 5. 2B and 9S. These two could make for an interesting pair gameplay dynamic. You could control 2B and hack and slash at people with your floating weapons, while 9S is in the background using hacks or the little droid that's given to you. Or maybe they just go full ice climbers, who's to say? Honestly, I feel like 9S would probably just be part of the final smash in reality, because 2B is strong enough on her own to have a full moveset. The most exciting part about this though is the idea of having near music in Smash. The soundtrack for this game is honestly unbelievable, and even if you don't want to play it, at least go listen to some of the songs. The main issue with 2B is that is a whole lot of butt for Smash Brothers, and I can't really see Yoko Taro letting them alter 2B's design in order for her to fit into the game better. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but there's no way this original design would get in without any changes. The waifu effect is strong with this one, and it would make for a really hype inclusion, as unlikely as that inclusion may be. Hype level 7! Likelihood 3. Ratchet and Clank. I honestly do not have much to say about this one. I don't think it's ever going to happen, and I don't think it would be very exciting if it did. Remember that these characters have been chosen by Nintendo, so why on earth would they go for Ratchet and Clank? As I've mentioned before, there's Crash, or Kratos, even Spyro. Any of these characters would be much more likely to be chosen by Nintendo for a slot in Smash. Maybe I'm missing something, but there just seems to be no reason in my mind that these two would get in. The buddy duo angle is cool, but we already have that covered with the best buddy duo of all time with Banjo and Kazooie. Sorry fellas, but you can go right back to PlayStation All-Stars. Hype level 3. Likelihood 2. Leon Kennedy. I'm honestly surprised Resident Evil doesn't have a character in Smash yet, considering how big the series is for Capcom. Leon is undoubtedly the poster boy of the series, but the biggest roadblock for him being added is the addition of four Resident Evil spirits to Smash including Leon. This was done as part of the hype surrounding Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 getting ported to the Switch, as these spirits were added in November of 2019. 
Now I'm not one to say a spirit deconfirms a DLC character, and I'm sure the spirits were decided on far before the DLC slots were up for grabs, but when spirits are added into the game retroactively as an update, only a few short months before Fighters Pass 2 is announced to the public, well, that may pose a bit of a problem. It seems that these characters weren't considered for the upcoming Fighters Pass 2 at all, and they were just added as spirits to get some Resident Evil representation into the game. I think Leon would play pretty cool if he were to be added to the game though. Maybe a little bit like Snake, but with some awesome kung fu moves to boot. Imagine Roundhouse kicking Mario in the face before you hit him with your knife. Damn, maybe this character would be more hype than I thought. Hype level 6! Likelihood? Two. Doom Guy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, get your pitchforks ready, because I feel like Doom Guy would not be very good in Smash Brothers. Let me ask you this. If you aren't literally ripping people in half to kill them, blood and guts exploding everywhere, is it really even Doom Guy at all? At the end of the day, what makes Doom Doom is the downright brutal, disgusting, and unholy demon exploding that you would be hard pressed to find anywhere else. And obviously, this kind of over the top action can't really work in Smash Brothers. I mean, what are they gonna do, let him slice Mario to pieces? We all saw the Ridley reveal trailer, and even that was on the line of being too intense for Smash. And that move looks a lot less brutal in the game anyway. I can see why people want Doom Guy to show up, but if you aren't going to be able to do what Doom Guy does best, I know everyone would just end up feeling disappointed. I know that Doom is the granddaddy of all FPS games, but at the end of the day I think Master Chief would be a better choice for showing off the flair of the FPS genre while also staying true to its source material. You gotta do something to keep that E10 rating on the box after all. So although I know his initial announcement would get people excited, his implementation in game would leave the fans feeling pretty disappointed. Hype level 6! Likelihood? 3. Scorpion. Here we find the same deal as Doom Guy. Without the ability to do a full fatality and rip off someone's head as your final smash, it would seem untruthful to the source material. Mortal Kombat is known for its violence to the point where it was one of the key contributors in the founding of the ESRB and the need for video games to be rated at all. Yeah, so that's a pretty big deal. Without the violence, Mortal Kombat loses almost all of its character. And as great as it would be to see Scorpion and Ryu and Ken with Terry all in one match, telling someone to get over here without the blood and guts would feel like a huge piece of the franchise's passion was missing. I don't really see Nintendo ever going near this with a 10-foot pole, and that's a pretty big shame because this would be a damn cool inclusion. Hype level! Five. Likelihood, two. Hey Hachi. So with Mortal Kombat out of the running and us already having characters from Street Fighter and King of Fighters, Tekken would really help round out the fighting game roster. I don't know too much about Tekken, but it seems like the last big fighting game that isn't here yet. It's a Bandai Namco property too, so the rights for a Tekken character would be pretty easy to secure. Heihachi himself is apparently one of the main characters, but like I said, I've never so much as dabbled with Tekken. It seems like a popular choice though, and the only issue I can see with getting a character like this would be having another Shoto on the roster. It seems it might be hard to make another Shoto that feels as unique as Terry. Either way, we know Sakurai loves his fighting games, so someone like Heihachi could sneak into the fighter's pass flying completely under most people's radars. This is one to watch out for, for sure. Hype level 3. Likelihood 7. Soul bad guy. What? No, that can't... No, that can't be right. Is that really his name? What? Oops, did I just say that the last big fighting game to be added should be Tekken? Well, Guilty Gear also has a sizable fan base. Although it's pretty big in the fighting game community, I'm not too sure that it's a fan base wide enough to appeal to the general Nintendo Smash Bros audience. As bad as the reputation can get for anime sword characters, I feel that the general perception of anime fighting games is even worse. To me, it feels like there's a lot of other pools Nintendo would rather reach into other than something like Guilty Gear, so it's hard to see this one actually happening. I can't say much about the game itself as I'm unfamiliar with the series, but an Arc Systems Works character would be a neat inclusion, just not one that I can realistically see coming to fruition anytime soon. And either way, even if an Arc Systems Works character does make it in, 
We all know it's gonna be Goku, baby! Wahoo! No going back now! We got Goku and Smash Brothers! Hype level... 5. Likelihood... 2. Neku Sakuraba. The World Ends With You has a killer art style and extremely unique gameplay mechanics, so I think this could make for a good inclusion. I'm not too sure how the touchscreen style drawing gameplay could translate into Smash, but luckily I'm not the one who has to come up with it. It's not my job, I'm just a worthless internet boy. Leave me alone! Good design, good potential for a cool moveset, and a relatively good chance to show up due to the series' ties with Nintendo and their hardware. There's probably other Square Enix characters that Nintendo would rather go for, but if they get refused for some others, this is a good runner-up. Sadly, I don't think the remake did too well on Switch, so maybe this is more unlikely than I think. Either way, would make for a good off-the-wall choice in my book. Hype level 4. Likelihood 4. And that's the second half of this list. As a recap, here's the characters that I think are the most hype, and the characters that I think are the most likely. And for the sake of continuity, here's my picks including all the characters from the first video as well. Do you agree with my choices, or did I do the equivalent of cursing your firstborn child by disrespecting your favorite character? Let me know in the comments down below, and also remember to tell me who I should put in part 3 of every character's chances of being in the Fighter's Pass. Let me know in those comments down below. And make sure to subscribe so you can see when part 3 of every character's chances of being in Fighter's Pass 2 goes live, using suggestions from all of you. Check out my Twitch page where I'm live every Sunday at 7pm Eastern, sometimes even more during the week, as well as our community Discord in the description. Thanks a lot guys, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye for now!